In this video, I'm gonna give you two passing concepts that really epitomize my favorite style of passing in Madden. And I think, honestly, if you look over the course of time, one of the most effective methods of passing year in and year out. Now, I'm gonna be in the West Coast bunch. If you wanna get my entire West Coast offensive ebook, you can join the Patreon for just $10. It'll get you access to all of my Madden content, all of my ebooks, all the updates to those ebooks, everything we're dropping for 24. It, everything's on the Patreon. So if you want to get access to all that stuff, the link is in the description. You can sign up the link down below. All right, so West Coast Bunch, and we're talking today specifically about a concept um, that I really like year in and year out. And it's really, um, it's what I call attacking the middle of the field, okay? So, and I'm gonna set this up a little bit. So uh, real quick, I wanna set a couple of audibles for our time here today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have deep attack, we're gonna have mesh post, and really what you wanna have, and this is what makes Bunch so good, is it has these really nice post routes from both sides. Um, there's only one other formation in the game that I believe has these really good post routes, and that is tight slots halfback week, which is why tight slots halfback week is one of the best formations in the game this year. Um, and then we'll, we can leave verticals and corner strike, and then um, I'll come out in this play deep corner, uh, but we're really gonna be spending most of our time in mesh post and deep attack. So here's what I wanna just set up real quick. So so um, if you think about bunch traditionally, where do people like to attack when, when they're running bunch? There's really a couple of areas, um, but one of them is the sideline. So I'll play like corner strike. For example, this has a high low on both sidelines and we're trying to get the ball um, to the deep sideline on either side, okay? So especially if it's man to man, like this is a really good play this year. If you re C route the solo wide receiver, he can get pretty good separation against man to man on the cut, like just like that. And you have a chance to get that to the sideline. Now against zone coverage, um, let's say for example, you wanted to uh, do something like this against zone coverage. You'd probably want to flip your bunch and have more of a setup like this, but it's still the same basic thing where we're trying to attack one of the sidelines deep down the field, as you can see. So if you think about the counter, um, what is the natural counter to this, okay? There's really two counters. Number one is to send pressure and to shade outside um, or to play what I call bracket coverage. Um, so it looks something like this where we have outside leverage. Um, so we have some outside zones that are designed to bracket the sidelines. That makes throwing either one of these routes relatively difficult, okay? Because um, you see, they're bracketed to the sideline, and we're gonna the the opponent's gonna force us uh, to throw the ball in the middle of the field. The same thing is also is also true, okay? The same kind of uh, concept is also true with what's known as Mabel coverage. So let's say we wanted to attack the short side of the field. Maybe they would have to get you to get into this little flip game, but basically you'd be walking into a defense that looks kind of like this. Um, this is a double Mabel concept with a user being in the middle of the field. So if you think about this from a route progression, how are we going to attack? Well, if you think about it, it's gonna be really hard to throw the ball to the sideline on the left side, and then the user is also sitting in the middle field so that he can basically take that in right away, okay? Because they've loaded up their resources on the sideline. So that's pretty much the problem. And this is, I think, the equivalent if you were to play basketball to the three-point shot, wanting to attack deep, um, down the sidelines, spacing the field, that stuff is basically the equivalent to the three-point shot. Now, one of the other things um, that you'll see people do from time to time is go to something like this verticals, um, this verticals play. Uh, the problem with this verticals play is that vert hook is still on that side, okay? So because that vert hook is still over there, and let's just say they man the running back up, which this works this year, they're gonna play really good defense on this because the tight end seam wheel is gonna get in the seam, but the vertical hook is there in, in, the, in position to guard that. And so what we really need to counter this is something that is gonna really attack the middle of the field. And when I say attack the middle of the field, I mean attack from numbers to numbers. And also I would recommend that, they that the uh, attack goes from somewhere from five to about 30 yards in the middle of the field, okay? Because the, the zone that that is going to basically attack, if you think this out, is the one yellow zone in the middle of the field and the one user. So if you think about it, we have a vertical hook. That, that vertical hook realistically is probably gonna go to about here and then he's gonna stop. 
and then we have a user that can play you know all this stuff in the middle field but you only be in one spot at one time so this is where mesh posts and deep attack come become really handy because they're basically the same exact concept what we're going to do with mesh posts is we're going to streak our um we're going to streak our slot receiver and we're just going to block our running back we're going to run the play just like this now if you wanted to feel free to motion this guy out and you can staff the ball out here if you want to get more space but look at where he's able to attack look at the space of look at where he's actually at when he catches this football uh in the replay what you're going to notice is this clears out now again this is that vertical hook watch he gets to about 10 yards and what does he do he stops why because now he's isolated here so even if let's say this is the user and the user goes back into here this guy's still open because he's getting pulled by this route okay that's really really important but the other thing is again i'm i snapped the ball on 20 yard line he's catching this ball at about 20 to 25 yards right in the middle of the field where there's no one to be able to help defend that, okay? That is the idea. Now, the other benefit of a concept like what we're showing you right here is let's say they're playing you in man coverage. So if they're playing you in man coverage, this still beats man coverage because the post route will beat man and then the drag route will also be man. So you're still able to have pretty good success against man coverage while also still being able to attack the middle of the field. In general, you want to run against man and you want to sit against zone. And if you don't know what it is, then you want to try to optimize for both. And you do that by running these crossers, these slant post style concepts. Now, um, the same thing is true. So what's a, what's a potential counter? Um, a potential counter would be something like this cover four because we're going to put these safeties in the middle of the field. Now, the problem, and this is why the motion out is so critical, is if we do something like a cover four, then by motioning this out, we're still going to get that same problem because that inside quarter is not going to be over in that area. And so now you're able to attack there. Now, the other reason why cover four is potentially problematic is because cover four doesn't solve the problem. The cover four can't handle short side floods. So I go back to deep corner, I just streak this guy, and now my sideline is, is pretty much completely open over here on the left side. So by attacking the middle of the field with deep attack and mesh post, and they're the same exact thing. So here's the deep attack version. Um, you can run a couple different variations of it, but really it's basically this um, right here you get the same basic thing because you've got your in route, your slant, they're going to be man coverage. You also have that post coming to back in the deep middle area of the field. And now instead of attacking the left side, um, if you think about it, we were throwing that mesh post route. We were throwing that at the left side hash, right? If we throw that deep attack, we're probably going to put that ball about the right side hash mark. So that's the basic idea. And uh, the beauty of this is this, when they're trying to play like bracket techniques and stuff to try to stop your concepts, then you go to these these um, deep attacks because those outside thirds and cloud flats, they're not going to play these post routes in the middle of the field. And so you now have a lot more room to be able to open stuff up for your offense. This would be the equivalent in the NBA of attacking with mid-range jump shots. And if you know anything about mid-range jump shots, they're one of the biggest indicators of whether or not a team is going to be successful as how effective are they at attacking the mid-range um, as well as threes and layups. But what the mid-range does is the mid-range opens up the threes and it opens up the layups. So same concept applies to Madden. If you want to learn this a little bit more in depth and how to do this from multiple formations, join the Patreon. That's where you're going to get access to all of my Madden 23 resources, all of our eBooks, everything for just 10 bucks. And I guarantee it's going to make you a better Madden player. So if you want to sign up, head down to the description and go click the link down below.